there are about 1.4 billion cattle in the world. We consume about 841 million tons of milk and 71 million tons of beef. Today, I'm at a pump in the central region to find out what cattle rearing is like in Ghana. And I'm here to speak to the farm manager. In what's in our Oh, look, I said 200. 200. Most years, yes, settle with her. How many years? Me? About four years. Four years. Business, what's it? Uh, uh, slow. Uh, slow. I didn't hear. Uh, has it been slow all these four years? Slow and I see, uh, in the way, uh, security wise. Okay. And your crowd. I didn't. So I come to me take him. I come for the baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To save the people. Oh, okay. Mm. Now, do you, do you have any special care for them? Nema keten kiti biya every day mo ye. Yeah, se wo yara. You won't do a specific place where you want to warm up. You won't do where you want to warm Oh, okay. 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 Any uh, uh, flies, no more than protect you from flies. There's no way I protect you. Okay, now I'm going to be able to say more. Mucha, na, yeah, mucha. To prevent it from hurting people. Oh, okay. Do you know what I'm saying, Fusa? It's all going to be able 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 it's a name, 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 I see. Why are they making that noise? The, the, it's, they are, it's time for them to do, go to the grazing. Mm -hmm. That's why they are doing that. This, uh, they are do, making this sound. So we have time that they eat. They have time for eating, time for drinking. So what time? What time do they eat? As you see, mm. they are going out. It's time for them to go and eat grass. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, how many do you have here? Oh, as you see, let's say like 100 and something, like more than 120 or 110. Mm -hmm. So these are only focused on what's meat? Because I know that uh, cattle rearing is either dairy, meat or leather. What's okay. the focus here? You know, cattle farming about our this is our nomadic family, Fulanis. Mm. It's there for them like a tradition. They are growing their cattle for so many purposes. Not only for selling to the butchers, okay. and also sometimes milk. Sometimes they sell them for their needy. Buying clothes, buying food, medicine, and whatever. Is for their, uh, their economic activity. Everything is coming from the cutters. Mm. Everything is coming from that. But what they're supposed to get, they are not getting because there's no more much of grass, there's no more much of space, and they are facing, facing challenges. Mm. Here, where we are, here is coastal area between uh, Futu and Gomboa and Aguna. Here, we don't have much of rain. In the year, maybe we got, if the rain season, we got three heavy rain. After that, there's no rain here. But in the other side, there's more rain. But that place also, there's more crop farming and mountains people are building also in that area. But it has this place, there's no much of grass. But they are only managing. And they don't have, they don't got also much of milk Sometimes they get only half a liter or 50 millimeter. Sometimes, as you see when he came, you saw the bottle. 
is for two cows, 70, 70 LM, uh, 700 LM. How much the person will gather to take it to the market to go and sell to get something for his family? It's very difficult. How do you uh, identify that this cow or bull is suffering from a this particular This is our, our, our work since ancient time up to now. And so at any, so at, any, at any point in time, if one animal is sick, we know. And the animal also, if there's something bad here, they will, they, will, they will give you a sign. Mm -hmm. There's something here. And so if they are breathing, mm -hmm. the air is coming from somewhere. And that also, if there's a disease in, it's affecting them. So how do you treat them? Do we have, have so many traditional medicine and veterinary, veterinary also. Okay. Uh, to come and treat them. Okay. Um, in, in the water, mm -hmm. are they bathing or... Are no, they, they, they drink. Only drink. drinking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I understand that a cow mm -hmm. gets pregnant mm -hmm. or conceives mm -hmm. nine, nine months, months yeah. like a human being. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long does it take you to grow such a head? Oh, it will take so long time. But there are animal which is their bless. Before you realize the number is growing. Mm -hmm. Because if a female cow deliver this year and the following year she will deliver with that if she did a female mm -hmm. she will deliver another, another, and from nine months going also she will deliver and the third one she will deliver with the her, her, her daughter or whatever, what I would say oh, okay. <laughs> yeah okay. the third one the daughter also will deliver I see mm -hmm. so means a cow of about three years can give birth? No, two. 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 Wow. two. You've been doing this for how long? For so long. We, we don't have any other business about this. Is it bringing you cash? Uh, before, before, when there's more space, mm -hmm. there's, no, there's more space, we are getting something on it, in it. But today, as we are speaking, everywhere there's challenges. Not only here, everywhere. What are some of the challenges? Is like it because space? now we've, we've started building more so... Does it. Okay. Where the animals are used to go to graze, there's no space. People are built. And in the forest also, there's more, much of farms. You can't take them to the, that forest. And so you are only managing some few places where there's grass. As I say, here is coastal area. There's not much of rain. If you get rain, much uh, heavy rains three times in the year. The rest is small, 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 small. I understand that cows have a problem with flies. House yes. flies. The, I don't know, but the way human beings, mosquitoes bite us, and then we have. I understand for cows, it's flies. The flies are so. There are so many type of the fly. Okay. There are some small flies. They are the one who digest in the the feces. There's some big flies in the bush. That one is, if they bite, uh, that fly bite them, they got sick and some of them die. Mm. Oh, so how, how do you ensure that these flies do not really affect them? And we don't take them to the zone where the flies is. Okay. Because that flies, they are not spreading everywhere. They just locate at one place. If you mistakenly you pass there, or you want them to do your ranch there, they will affect their animals. Much of them will die. If you, realize, you see it uh, very early, you will just take them away from there okay. to go and cure them. Talk about the feces. Mm -hmm. How do you ensure that everywhere is kept clean? Mm -hmm. uh, as you say, if everywhere is kept clean, we are not getting good, uh, no more grass because this one is the one who bringing the grass back. Hmm. And again also, in their ranch, it's like a heater. It's heating the ground for them to sleep on it. Even if there's cold, they can't feel it much. Uh, it's another, it's something also. How do you know that this is a, a female, is a cow, uh, and this is a bull? And then how do you tell when one is pregnant? All those things. Once she got pregnant, you will know. She will no more give uh, milk to the, to the babies. 
that one ends there. And the bull also, if the, uh, the female deliver bull, that one you will see the sign. This one is bull. And he's, this female also, you will see the sign, this one is female. So you milk them? If they deliver newly, we milk them for some months and after we stop. Because if there's more grass, we can get more milk. If there's no grass, no milk. Ah, if there's no grass, <laughs> no milk. Because no milk. No. they're not getting more to eat. Exactly. Okay. Have you had engagements with maybe the landowners or chiefs or something? Yes. Do you have such conversations? Yes. That's the reason why you find us here. Okay. Because this land was acquired for so long for some one of our old man. He owns here. He dug this dug out. And so here is belong to someone. I saw that a few headsmen have, you know, built ranches around. How do you make sure that this one's cow or bull doesn't go into another person's ranch? Well, definitely, you know, um, we have been with these animals for ages. So that is uh, the work. We met our forefathers and grandfathers, until our fathers, until ourselves. So we have more experience when it comes to the, the what we call um, cattle farming. So definitely everybody identify his own animals without any uh, kind of technical thing. Mm. Naturally, we identify our animals because we've been with them for a long time. And concerning the bulls, that one definitely, each animal or each ranch is located. Even though they may be somehow close, however, a bull will not leave its own ranch to the other ranch. And even if it does so, it will be brought, it will be brought back. Do, do they have? Do people have a way of communicating to the to the cattle? Because I could hear one of the headsmen making a certain sound. What kind of sound? What sound do you make when it is going to feed? What sound do you make? Yes, yes. You know, sometimes people do say we, we speak to the animals. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is true. We do speak to them. However, it may not be as people think. Uh, you communicate to the animal like how you communicate to human beings. Mm -hmm. It's just like a dog. As we all know, those who train dogs very well, you can communicate to a dog and the dog will understand you to ask it to sit or to stand up or to run or to do. So such communications are, are there. There are certain uh, communications that we have to the animals and the animals have some certain communications that they do to us as well. You see, they moved with their mothers mm -hmm. from the ranch. However, as they got to this point, you see them separating themselves. This is telling you that they are not going to move with their mothers to the main grazing, but they will remain, remain around. Why? You see, this is a very white one. Uh -huh. It's called Gudali. It's a Gudali. Can get my turn now? So it has just given a first born. Uh -huh. So it's a good idea. You see, it's a bit different from the, from the animals. This very one here is called Boboji, the brown, the brown one. one. And those are the smallest, smallest among the animals. If you look at that one, it's the bull we have, that is the master bull we have in the ranch. This very one. The black one, the black one is the master bull of the ranch. So he's the, the biggest among the bulls. We have another one there which is also white. So we have about two bigger bulls managing these animals. Now, for now, this very bull is around five years. Both the two bulls that are here are around five years. And they start um, crossing very well when they are exactly three years. And what we do is that when you bring in a bull, most of the bulls, they don't need to come from the animals. You need to bring the bull outside. The reason is because if, if you bring the bull from outside, it's now crossing different animals entirely. If you bring the bull, if it crosses after two, three years, you have to change it. 
And the reason why you have to change it is that some of the cattle, some of the cows will now be its own siblings. You get what I mean? So when its own siblings, uh, you know, attain to matured age, now if, if you did not take off the bull, the bull will be crossing its own, you know, own, uh, what we call it, its, its, its own baby, which it is not appropriate. When it's happening like that, it causes something like, uh, traditionally it's a small case to the head and it could cause anything. It could cause animals to die anything could happen uh -huh. but even technically when we knew this already before after interrupting with the technicians we also realized that they also do the same that it is not good for a bull to cross and cross its own baby you get the point so it means that it's something we knew already for long so anytime a bull you know stays in your head more than three years you need to take it off and bring a new bull. This is what we call open grazing, open grazing system. We have uh, three uh, types of grazing in terms of uh, uh, cattle. We have what we call full open grazing system. And this is, that is this one. Your animal need to leave the ranch to go out and pick the feed as they want, as you see them grazing around. Okay. So this is open grazing. They don't have any um, other feed when they return home mm. and we have what we call full intensive the full intensive is what is what we know in developed countries it's not more here it's not much here and that is for the animals to be confined totally and be fed in that is full intensive and we have semi-intensive semi-intensive means they can go out graze for some time and then return back for another feed but for this, this is just an open grazing system which we, our fathers and forefathers, inherited. And this is how it happens within the sub Saharan Africa, except very few commercial farmers who confine their few animals for business purposes. Okay, so what are as humans, right? When we end up in crowded places where there may be a disease or something, we catch it. How are these able to, you know, resist diseases or how are diseases treated among cattle? Well, uh, you know, um, it is good. Alhamdulillah, cattle, um, in terms of disease control, is very, very important. Uh, sometimes they are not easily affected directly. However, this, what do we call, uh, um, uh, d disease spread that one normally come in. We have some um, common diseases like food and mouth disease, known as food and mouth disease. We call it suffer in our local language. And then uh, we have uh, what we call the CBPP. That's a technical name for it, which is a heart disease, CBPP, which is also known as a, no in better CBPP, need do like it's a trouble of the heart. Okay. These are the two diseases that trouble our animals. And they are diseases that transmit. Mm. So the issue is that any, if you have a common grazing and these animals are infected with food and mouth disease or CBPP, then it will affect the other heads. Mm. So that is why we enjoin all cattle farmers and our technical men inform us that every year we need to vaccinate our animals against the CBPP. But the food and mouth disease, we've not been able to, got, to get the vaccine yet. So I think sometimes we try to prevent those diseases. However, when they come, we, we treat them. But the most challenging one is the heart one, CBPP, which today in Ghana, uh, it takes 20% of our animals every year. The good lands for grazing is the same good lands that people want to farm on. Is that the, the reason why uh, there has been over the years some confusion between uh, headsmen and farmers? In the yes, country? yes, is the reason and it's one of the biggest reasons. And I can say that uh, 
you know, you find out that these conflicts, the perennial conflicts we are talking about, the farmer header conflicts, mm -hmm. actually do happen mostly during the drought season. Because within the raining season, you know, the grass is found almost everywhere. So the cattle don't need to go too much far to access the grass. You get me? Mm -hmm. But during the drought season, now the cattle need to move far to access the grass. So during that time, it is only the cool areas, the southern parts where it's a bit cool, is where you find a grass. So that's why most of the times you see during the drought season, the animals from the north move from the, to Bonahafo region, move down to Ashanti and wherever, come downward. And these places are also the farming community areas. So the movement of the animal, which is also mandatory because where I am, if I cannot produce feed for my animals and the, there is a drought, there is no feed, what do I do? I have no alternative. I don't have any technical way to, to bring to, what do we call, to formulate any feed to my animals. So the only option is to move. And through the movement, the conflicts, you know, occurs. Why can't we get uh, some feed, some uh, feeds like the, like the poultry, Farmers also give their their fowls, uh, the pig. Farmers also give their pigs. I know they feed for cattle, right? So, so what's the hold up? Yeah, the hold up is very simple. The feed for cattle, what one animal will eat a day, is is too much. It's not small. It's not. It cannot be compared to the the chicken. So if you have a good number of animals and think you can feed them except if you want to do what we call fattening. Mm -hmm. Fattening is during the drought season I go into the north or any parts and then get some animals. They are grown already but because of the hunger they look lean. I bring them down to the south and then I just keep them somewhere, cut some grass and buy something maybe within a certain period. The maximum time for uh, what do we call fattening is three months mm. so you dispose them you sell them there are few numbers of animals so you can be able to feed them in and sell but about 200 cattle 300 cattle how are you feeding them you cannot feed them because even if the feed is there number one they need a gradual adoption because they've not been used to it, it the technicians must come in number two even if it happens like you cannot afford to buy because you don't use to derive what we call daily income from your animals. You mentioned the, the poultry farmers. The poultry farmers, you, if you say how many fowls or chicken will you sell to buy one cow? Almost 1,000 to buy one cow. You understand? But because they do have daily income from the eggs, so it gives them the power. Every day they get something. Every day they get something. So if they get something every day, from what they get every day, they can buy feed too. But for we, those advanced places where they give the animals feed, you find out that they derive milk a lot. So they sell the milk and from that they buy the feed and feed the animals and then get even more. Talking about the milk, how, how far is your conversation with they usually embassy to ensure that, you know, cattle in Ghana produces more milk. Yes, what we are saying to the Israeli embassy and to all um, concerned stakeholders is that uh, we are surely, as cattle farmers in Ghana, we are surely in need of partners. We are seriously in need of partners so that they will move us, they will give us the technical, you know, aspect of how we could have you know, low number of animals with a bigger gain. Because normally I used to say that people become surprised why I keep 1,000 animals, 300 animals, 400 animals. Why? You see, but the person don't know that until I sell that animal, I don't have anything from it. So I need to have quantity so that I can I sell and succeed. But if we are able to have a technical or what we call a demonstration center or a capacity building center where we can all learn as to how can we change our animals 
is either by uh, our partners supporting us with uh, bulls like Jesse, like HF animals, or by semen to inseminate the animals so that we can get the best breed needed for actually both uh, milk and then the beef. So when we are able to get that, you see that people will limit the number of their animals and then they can be able to feed them intensively. Food chain and on today's episode, we're looking at cattle rearing in Ghana, Amatapam in the central region to find out how it is done. If you can see behind me, the crawls are empty. That is because the cattle are out on the field to graze. Follow me as we go to find out and engage some women on how they use the milk to make wangashi. I know some of you may not know wangashi, but we'll find out. Come and let's enjoy. How do you prefer the wangashi? We first of all put the milk on fire for it to get heated. Afterwards, you pound this stick, add salt to it, mix it with the milk and sieve it in it, this basket. So about 10 to 15 minutes or 20 minutes, then it will get ready for you to put it in this basket backwards. Then it will form into the shape and turn it into your rubber. Okay, so after this, I know it's, a, it's brownish, right? No, it's not brownish, it's whitish like this. But some do cook it with um, another leaf that is used for wachi, so, for it to become brown. So you can eat it like this? Yes, please. You can fry it, eat it like this. After frying it, how does it look like? Brownish. Brownish. But it to be whitish inside. Mom, but you said me, you know, yeah, 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 crossy because crossy na me train no omu wo. And see, you milk na every single time I eat the bag run, milk na be ni nya. And see, me nya wagashi. And see, nya fresh milk na di aye wagashi. And see, na yon wo crossy as na di ba. Aha. So why did you switch from the cow milk? I didn't na muda. Me 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 ba mu no me use cow milk da. Okay, I didn't hear. Eh, so yeah, we no amu amu try say, eh biya amu miya miya na inchi no phone na eh biya fee ni adi adi na eh biya we money nti nti eh nti na amu ma yeah 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 na second list amu so yeah na sanu so yeah ni ame tika tik to say we no nti we no so ako ye powdered one na ya treating no nti to the open so amu na ya tik biya. Okay, so yellow one, Mason, what is that? And then couscous. Couscous. <laughs> what is couscous? Then it couscous. Hey, couscous is maybe a, 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 a tough ritobo, a okay. French, but we see the framework, and so we are open. We to an edit mark, not framework. It's a no no. And no more the fry, the session I hear milk, no milk. Okay, no, no, so there you have it, Hilda. Ever since she started selling Brookina 19 years ago, hasn't used milk directly from the cow. But according to her, the milk powder, well, which is Processed cow milk is what she uses. It's what she uses. She says that you know, using milk directly from the cow has a few challenges. That's why they use the processed milk. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Food Chain. My name is Emma Davis.